Paul Ski and Dave Ski here from Bear Ski Film. And, uh, you know, usually we have some type of topics outlined for the show and whatnot, but I've had a bad day today and I kind of want to take it out on the internet. So we're going to go a little astray, do something, something a little different. So I took some time to prepare some statistics and some numbers. Now, what's really been aggravating me and kind of taking me off is seeing these different memes pop up of just statistics thrown out there. Like, for example, one is, is there a quarterback controversy? Here's Fields numbers. Here's Tyson Bajan's numbers. Of course there isn't. And it's like, dude, one, there's no controversy, but it's not due to just plain black and white statistics. I hate that. I hate statistics with no context. I really think it's, it's the cheap and easy way to go. Anyone can Google stats, and that, that's what I did today. So we are going to play a little game. Um, I have numbers. So I don't know why I chose a seven-game stretch. I saw something somewhere with a seven-game stretch, and it just kind of stuck. And once I started doing it, I just kind of stuck to it. So I have a seven-game stretch for multiple quarterbacks. I got about ten of them. And I am going to give you the stat line. And as, see, I mean, I don't want to like throw it at you and like attack you with it or make you like sound dumb because it's, it's nearly impossible to guess mm-hmm. who's what quarterback. And that's the whole point of this is the stats mm-hmm. are stupid without context, right? Yeah. So let's start it off. Here, here we go. In a seven, and, and I try to find oh. these early in these guys' career, right? Like within the first two years or so. I, I try to take a seven game stretch because not every guy plays an entire season his first year and whatnot. You know, there's anomalies, but I try to get like a good seven consistent starts. So our first quarterback over seven games had a 69% completion percentage through 107 passes out of 155. He had 10 touchdowns, five interceptions and 1,316 yards. Our second quarterback had 59% completion, but he had 13 touchdowns and seven interceptions, and he had 1,639 yards. Which quarterback do you think is better? If I could hear the second guy's stats for one more second. Sure. 130 for 218, or 130 out of 218, which is 59% completion, 13 touchdowns, seven interceptions, 1,639 yards. And is this over the first seven games of their career? Within the a... first year or two or so, okay. yeah. There's, there's a, it's a solid uh, seven game consistent stretch. I would rather have. I think I'm learning this about myself for like watching quarterbacks. I'd rather have the second guy because he had more production on the on like the most important statistics. Because 13 versus 10 touchdowns sounds close. But that's mm-hmm. 21 more points for that team. Okay. Whether that's one game or two games, but that's a that's an important number. So I would rather have quarterback number two. Yeah. So quarterback number one is Ben Roethlisberger. Quarterback number two is Rex Grossman. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. So dumb. It's just dumb without context. Let's go to the yeah. next one. Um, this quarterback had a 56% completion percentage, 146 out of 260. Nine touchdowns, eight interceptions, nearly 1,500 yards, 1,483. Meanwhile, the other quarterback had 62% completion, 127 out of 204. Uh, He had nine touchdowns, six interceptions, and 1,332 yards. I feel like now I'm I'm, uh, going to overthink it, so I'm going to say number one. Yeah, so number one is Sam Bradford. Number two is Drew Brees. No, oh, no. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I told you I had a bad day. I'm taking it out on people. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's you today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Let's keep going. I got a couple more, right? Okay. Um, quarterback number one. We had 48% completion percentage, 95 out of 197, six touchdowns, nine interceptions, and just broke 1,000 yards, 1,043. Quarterback number two had 99 out of 197, which is very close because the other guy had 95 out of 197. So this guy's at 50%. The other guy's at 48%. But this quarterback has six touchdowns and only three interceptions and had 12.58 yards. 
very comparable statistics. Only reason I'm going to go with number one again, because I feel like a conservative guy who's that bland, who's only throwing that few touchdowns and that few interceptions is going to be somebody who we're going to say was like a boring guy. So I'm going to say number one. Yeah, number one is Eli Manning. Number two is Jamarcus Russell. Yeah. Yeah, so so Eli Manning threw nine interceptions in the same span that Jamarcus Russell threw three. Put that into yeah. context, right? No, dude, it's the team around you and stuff too, man. I mean, dude, it all yeah. – so many factors matter other than just plain numbers, right? Um, next one we're going to go with – 143 out of 262, which is 54% completion percentage, seven touchdowns, eight interceptions, and 1,700 yards versus – now, this guy, I couldn't find a seven-game stretch in his career, but this was out of six games. In six games, he did 62%, 10 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 1,700 yards. Well, it sounds so like guy number two might get hurt more often <laughs> or something. So let's say number one. So number one was Matt Leinart. Oh, boy. Number two was Kirk Cousins. Okay. Yeah, super comparable, right? Like just super yeah. comparable stats. Both 1,700 yards. I mean, one guy had seven touchdowns. The other guy had 10, you know, seven and eight, 10 and nine. Dude, they're, they're right there. Okay, so yeah. this one's great. This one's the best one, right? Quarterback number one went 121 for 191. Now, here's the thing. I'll give you mad props, mad props, if you could put names on these two quarterbacks, okay? All right, I'm gonna try Quarterback right number one. Yeah. I, dude, you're good. Me, you're good. That's why, me a division. That's why we me a division or something. Let me give you the stats first. Okay. And if you need a clue, I'll give you a clue, okay? okay. Quarterback number one went 121 for 191, which is a 63% completion, had 1,742 yards, 19 touchdowns, and no interceptions. Okay. Quarterback number quarterback number two went 131 for 240, 54% completion, had 1,600 yards, nine touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. Are these recent guys? Um, every quarterback I did was above the year 2000. Okay. Except, except one of these might be a year before 2000. So one of these guys might might be Dan. Both Marino. of these, both of these, no, not Dan Marino. Both of these guys, I'm saying drafted in the year 2000 plus. Oh, I think one of them was drafted yeah. 99. But both of these guys have a Super Bowl. So one of the guys, 19 touchdowns and zero interceptions. I don't know. It feels like Joe Flacco maybe or something. That's a good guess. On a hot streak? Um, it, It's not – no, the 19 touchdown guy is not AFC. He's NFC. Kurt Warner was my initial guess. That's a good guess. I, I forgot to look him up. Well, no, no that's, do you that's an older guy. 19 touchdowns, zero interceptions in the NFC. This guy should be a fucking Matt, Hall of Famer, right? Matt Ryan? No, 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 no. How about this? He was a Chicago Bear. Mm, Fairly Kyle recently. Orton. Oh, no. Fairly recently. Oh. Fairly recently as in, oh, uh, Andy Dalton. No, no, no. Hmm. You're, 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 you're kind of you're hitting the nail on the head. I think a little bit before Andy Dalton. Oh, Nick Foles. Boom. He had like a 28 touchdown, two interception season. Yeah. In a seven game stretch. Dude, he had one game where he threw for seven touchdowns. In a seven game stretch, man went 19 touchdowns and no interceptions. Okay. Wow. If we were to just throw those numbers out there right now, everybody's like, oh, this man's NFL God. And he winds up being third string on the quarter by the Bears. Like the, the other guy. Thing is that, that's the, uh, hold on. Hold the, the other guy. Whole six years of a career. Oh, People yeah. Tried to yeah. Grasp and he back it. onto that. Yep. Yeah. And, and so what about the other guy? Nine touchdowns, 14 and interceptions. Four That's like Joe Burrow that, or something. By far. In fact, if I compared any quarterback just statistically to this guy, I think you would statistically pick any one of these quarterbacks above him because he's got like the worst stat line in his first seven starts. Hmm. But he's 
Justin Fields? <laughs> no, he owns the record for most interceptions thrown as a rookie. Oh, uh, Jameis. Nope. As a rookie. Peyton? Peyton. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Peyton Manning actually laughs about this because he's like, man, I got 28 interceptions my rookie year. It's never going to be beaten because nobody's got the patience enough to sit there and, and develop a guy through his mistakes like they did for me. Okay. And yeah. dude, dude, so according to these numbers, Nick Foles is quarterback God. Meanwhile, Peyton Manning's dirt, like context, 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 mm-hmm. context. Listen, there is no quarterback controversy here in Chicago. Justin Fields is number one. Tyson Bajan is number two. But it is not due to just plain black and white numbers. I don't care that the guy threw three picks in a game. It's going to happen. It's going to happen with every quarterback. The reason why Justin Fields is number one, because his physical talent is much better. He's bigger, stronger, faster. His his resume is much better. Dude, if Tyson Bajan went to LSU and did what he did at Shepard University, but he did it in LSU, he would have been probably pick one. Like, it, the resume matters. You know what I mean? The experience matters. All this stuff matters. But at the end of the day, you know, as much as I put it all on the players, the coaching matters, the players around them matters. Like it's a team game, right? It's never just one guy. Yeah. So I'll end it off with this seven game stretch. It's just one quarterback, 76 for 131, 55% completion, five touchdowns, six interceptions, 1,048 yards. And that's Justin Fields, you know? And it's like, dude, it's just so comparable. Like, to so many good quarterbacks, bad quarterbacks, whatever. They're just numbers. At the end of the day, they're just numbers. So I hate these people that sit there and throw out just numbers without actually using any kind of eye test, which is why I kind of appreciate what me and you try and do because we try mm-hmm. and pour some realism into it. And I think that's important. And I think a lot of, a lot of people are lacking that, you know, they just sit there and throw out statistics. Like I could do, I, I can think, do it. I think a lot of people, and you brought you made me think of two really good talking points, which is just that exercise. And, and uh, I think the realism for us comes into context where we watch every single game, every minute of every game. But on top of it, we understand the the background stuff, the realistic expectations of a GM, what they have to deal with. Like we don't just watch a game and go like, oh, why did he throw that interception? Well, we see the six other things that went wrong with that play or that game plan or that drive. Why does that drive even end in interception? It should have had a touchdown three plays before or something along those lines, you know? So we, we break that down to that level. The two things that came to my mind when you're with that thought experiment was you're saying there's no quarterback controversy, but not because of the fact that Tyson Bajan isn't as close to Justin Fields as people want to give it credit for, right? I think the context matters in this case where Justin Fields is going to win out because not only is it, his resume, the things you brought up, Justin Fields is going to be quarterback number one. A, because I think he's earned it, right? He's been in this team for four years. He's getting his brains bashed in with bad teams and bad coordinators. So he deserves to keep proving himself if he wants to be out there. I think he's earned that from this team. Um, two, his ceiling, um, when put all together, is still, I think, higher than Tyson Bajan. Potentially, you know, there's still guys in the NFL who aren't as physically gifted as Justin Fields, like Joe Burrow. I think there's not one single trait other than his brain that Joe Burrow is better that better than Justin Fields at. And he can he is a better quarterback, undebatably. Like there's not a single team that wouldn't rather have Joe Burrow than Justin Fields. But Justin Fields probably throws harder, runs faster, um, moves quicker, right? Can take bigger hits, has a better body, all, all that stuff. So. Um, and then the other part of the th- of why Justin Fields is quarterback number one is that a t- there's a time limit here. You have Justin Fields for X amount more games, and you have now, you know, the rest of this season plus a potential fifth year option to figure out if he's the guy. Because I think for anybody who's just completely out on Justin Fields and says, "Hey, I'm done," I think that's foolish. I'm close, but I'm not done with Justin Fields. I'm still. I still want to see this year plus next year with Justin Fields. I yeah, still do. Definitely. My, my personal opinion. And so that all factors into why there's not a quarterback controversy. Having said all that, I think with what you've seen on the field, the gap between Justin Fields and what, what Justin Fields can do on the field and what Tyson Bajan can do on the field is incredibly close. I think that is a yeah. – if, if we're going on a rating scale of 1 to 100, what Justin Fields does well is 70% correct. 
right? Maybe 75%. What he does correctly on the field, 75% of the time he's out there, I trust him. Right now, I trust Tyson Bajan maybe 70%. It's not that big a difference. I trust it. I trust Tyson Bajan 5% less than Justin Fields right now. Um, having said that, T- Justin Fields needs to start the rest of the season and next year until proven otherwise. If we go into training camp and Tyson Bajan is just absolutely destroying Justin Fields in training camp, then that's one of those uh, Matt Flynn, Russell Wilson scenarios that you can have. And that's a good problem to have with whatever third quarterback is on your roster that, that summer. But right now, um, yeah, that's, that's the point I feel like you were trying to make without making it. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, there is no quarterback controversy in my mind just because, the again, all the things that we factor into why a quarterback has to start. But if people are saying, well, look at these stats about Justin Fields. He's so clearly better. I don't know about that. He's, he's better. Not, no, exactly. Right. He's he is better. better. It's not clear. But he's, he's also better. had three years, like you said. He's also had time to sit I here and develop his game. I would love to see game. Justin Tyson Bajan's third year. Yeah. Can't wait. I can't Dude, wait to see Aaron, Tyson Bajan in year three. It doesn't hurt for a guy to sit either. Aaron Rodgers said it didn't hurt him. You know, uh, it, Patrick Mahomes sat for a year. It didn't hurt him. Dude, Tyson Bajan clearly needs to develop. Like, he does. Yeah. But I don't see why people can't just be excited for the fact that we have a, a very good quarterback number two, yeah. potential-wise, and, and leave it at that. Like like you said, there is a time limit with Justin Fields, and Justin Fields has earned the starting role. This is number one's team, man. It, it just is what it is. And I don't care if people like it or don't like it or whatever. Some people turn it into a racism argument and this and that. No, yeah. it's it's none of that. It's the, All those things are stupid. What it is. What it is is, like I said, you have to put things into context and you have to apply the eye test to things. I saw Justin Fields carry a team on his shoulders last year. Mm-hmm. I did. You know what I mean? And this year, it finally started clicking a little bit. He had those two four-touchdown games. It's a shame that he got hurt. It's nice we got to see what we have in our court, backup quarterback because of it. And I'm only saying that because of when it happened. We were, You shoot yourself in the foot when you're 0-4. At that point, your season's done. I don't care if my starting quarterback gets hurt and I have to see the backup come in because we're already dead in the water. So if if we were in a playoff hunt, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be a little more upset that Fields is out and now we have to start a backup and this and that and whatever. But, you know, as, as long as this whole year is a project, then it's a project. Why not see what you have with guys? And like you said, the talent gap between them on the field, dude, Tyson Bajan can play in this league. He's earned himself oh, a couple time. years, whether it's in a backup role or whatever. The kid looks comfortable out there. This game is not too big for him, and he can play in this league. And that's huge, huge to 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 figure that out from an undrafted free agent quarterback. I mean, we could have had P.J. Walker out there, for Christ's sake. With, you know quarter, what I mean? with, with quarterback, it's interesting, especially in Chicago, because, well, generally speaking, like you want that number one clear guy, and – you don't want some guy to almost be nipping at his heels, right? Because you, if it does, then it creates a quarterback controversy. Then it's like, hey, half the locker room wants this guy to start. That's almost one of those culture things, right? Where you want the clear and distinct number one guy so it doesn't split up the locker room and it doesn't split up the coaching staff and debates and all this stuff. But until you find the number one clear guy, like any position in the NFL, don't you want three guys that are as close to each other as possible skill-wise and talent-wise and performance-wise? so that you have competition at that position. And we've said a lot of these little things behind the scenes and what we, you know, what we like to see. I'm so glad we don't see PJ Walker for three games here. I would have gained nothing from that. I'm so happy. We didn't watch three games of Nathan Peterman. I'm, I'm really glad for better or for worse. We were two and one, you know, I'm glad I got to see what Tyson Bajan is and what he can do and what his potential is. And I had a good time watching those games. There's, you know, and I'm not. I wasn't as upset with the mistakes. I understand it. It's a rookie, undrafted free agent, but that's a good place to start. And these guys can learn from each other because they're so close in terms of on-field production at this point. Like Tyson Bajan can sh- maybe, and this is just hyperbole. I understand, but we said this. Sometimes you just need to see somebody do that job. It's you know, model it for you, where something's just not clicking. So if Justin Fields sat down for three games and was just like, oh, okay, I see those two or three things Tyson did better than I did, maybe I can pull that into my game. Or if somebody like Bajan is watching what Fields does and 
put it into his game. That's healthy. That's normal. That's anything. We, we, we hear about defensive ends picking up each other's moves in training camp all the time. We hear about cornerbacks using teaching them about leverage and how to read a, a, you know, a five-step drop versus a three-step drop, well, how to read a guy's eyes. That's not exclusive to other positions. This is something that quarterbacks can do. There's tendencies that Zach Wilson picked up from Aaron Rodgers. Maybe it's not as like fluid and simple as that, but I don't see – I don't see the he negative. He definitely got right better. Now. Yeah. I mean, I don't see the negative right mm-hmm. now in Justin Fields and Tyson Bajan just kind of like learning from each other. They're both young guys. They're almost the same age. They're still, you know, new to the NFL relatively. And, you know, this was a lost project season, as you said, anyway. So whatever anybody is doing to get better this year, I mean, can we be that upset about it? Hopefully it Listen, results me- in better in better games next year. There you go. Let me lay out that hypothetical for you because that's where I was going next with it. Say next year we start the season and Justin Fields is rolling, right? And and we're winning games and he goes down for two weeks. Well, now I don't feel, I don't, I don't have all these question marks about Tyson Bajan coming in and he's already made some mistakes this year that he might learn from and improve from to play a cleaner game. If we only need him to win one or two of those games, you know what I mean? It's, it's a positive, like, I don't yeah. get what people are so, you know, up in the air about with, with these two guys. I think that um, I, I like them both on this team for the future moving forward. I do. Yeah. I think and, it's just, it's, I think any extreme opinion on this situation right now is just clickbait, to be honest. Like if you don't play the, if you're not playing this in the middle, like you should just be, you should be happy that Justin Fields is back soon and you get to watch more Justin Fields. And hopefully, you know, there isn't, hopefully both quarterbacks start getting put into position to win. And that's, I think, what we learned this week more than ever is both quarterbacks just are decent and talented, and they're just not being put in their best situations to win. And that's that's where we can improve first and foremost. 100%. So I'm going to sit here and, you know, I mean, hey, look, it, it took up a good good amount of little time just talking about this, right? Like it's I better said, than the first – Better than the first, like I said, maybe fuck the topics, right? So I'm gonna sit here. Well, I'm gonna delete the first topic because that's basically a Tyson Bajan point. Second one is for the rest of the season, QB controversy. That's that. Well, so we can Can add on top of this, like with with just like what is your ideal QB room thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can I transition into Jalen Johnson? Okay, I got a funny one. So, yeah, so uh, okay, so now you know, now having analyzed like the fact that we are very happy and content with. Fields and Bajan this year, at least. And however you feel about, you know, the contract situation, financial situation, all those things that go into it, right? Because I think coaching is going to be a, a giant factor in who's the quarterbacks next year. Like we talked about, I think week the last week or the week before, if Bajan is just a guy who likes Getze, wherever Luke Getze goes as a quarterback's coach or an offensive coordinator, it's not going to take much for Tyson Bajan to just go and follow. I don't really... I'm going to call ignorance on this one. I don't know how an undrafted free agent's contract works, but I assume it's not very long-term, and I assume it's for not a lot of money. So if Tyson Bajan is potentially free to go anywhere next year if he doesn't get re-signed, um, you know, if Tyson Bajan leaves and now you've just got Justin Fields left because he follows Luke Getzey somewhere, what does your ideal quarterback situation look like going into next season? So – you know, a lot of people speculate on like Caleb Williams and all that stuff. And I think that would be an incredibly toxic quarterback room. I think a Caleb Williams, oh, like yeah. Justin Fields, you know, I just don't want that. Um, you got to either, you know, get rid of everybody, bring in Williams and an old vet or something. But what does your ideal quarterback room look like going into next year? So just to address the contract situation, uh, Tyson yeah. Bajan, we had of him signed for three years, $2,700,000. So this year seven hundred fifty thousand, next year nine hundred fifteen thousand, and twenty twenty five he's making a million thirty thousand. So That's we awesome. have him through twenty twenty five. Yeah, That's it is great. awesome. That's great. So it's hope- great numbers for a quarterback number two right there. With yeah. uh, so hoping the upside that yes. So assuming that you know whatever the new coaching staff or existing coaching staff do going into next year, you have Fields under contract with a fifth year option. You have Bajan under contract. What does your quarterback room look like in training camp next year? Ideally. I'm I'm a firm believer 
of what Ryan Pace said, but never actually wound up doing. Um, I, I do believe you should take a quarterback every year. You should draft Ryan one Pace every or year. Ryan Poles? Ryan Pace said this. Wow. And never, never drafted a quarterback every year. Right. <laughs> he said it right when he got hired and then never did it, right? But um, <laughs> but, I, but I believe in the statement. You just got to follow through with it, actually, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, Justin Fields is here. Tyson Bajan's here. We draft another quarterback, but not in the first or second or even maybe third round. I don't know. You take you might take a guy super late just to just to have, or you know, I don't know. At this point, I think you're pretty comfortable with those two moving forward. And number three is just whatever. So um I'm not really sure. Think... Yep. Oh, I just say I agree with you completely, just because I think what we've seen even from this year, and I, I want to say years prior, I mean, there's always your outliers like Trevor Lawrence or Joe Burrow or whatever, but those guys are going into a little bit better situation than a new guy would be coming into here. Um, but I think you got to build a team around a guy and then install him. And in the last few drafts, you always see guys mid-first round that ended up being just as good as those first overall guys or even later than the first overall guy. So – you know, just recent guys are like Jalen Hurts, uh, even uh, Josh Allen. I think he went ninth, right? So you don't have to hope for the first overall pick to get your next quarterback. Will Levis was a second round pick at this point. He's only got two games under his belt, but he looks pretty good. And then you've got, you know, the the warning signs. The guys like Bryce Young and then C.J. Stroud goes second. Could have gone third, depending on how the Texans wanted to do that. Um, Anthony Richardson looks great, and he was the fourth. So I don't feel... I don't feel pressed to go for the first overall pick every single year all the time with the caveat of Arch Manning. I want him first overall. But overall, you I want would that rather – Arch Manning, Marvin Harrison Marvin Jr. Harrison connection, Jr. don't you? Are you a fan of that? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Listen, little bit, if we've fun. learned anything, it's – it's we try and replicate the Colts here left and right. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so we're be one way to we're do it. Pace. Bill Polian's about to be our head coach pretty soon. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, so I, I I think you just – you don't overplay your hand and start drafting quarterbacks left and right um, in, in early picks. You want to grab a third or fourth round developmental guy, cool, let him sit on the bench. But this better be a guy that is a system guy for the new coach that knows the kind of quarterback he wants. I'm sick of seeing – even Tyson Bajan is a pretty good example of a coach that just knows exactly what kind of guy he wants mentally and physically to run a system. And I think that makes a huge difference. And that's a guy like Brock Purdy. I think that's a guy like Jalen Hurts, right? Just a guy that you bring in because you know he can pull off the 10 or 15 things you ask him to do per game, right? Handoffs, you know, show your back on a play action, um, things like that. So – I, I hope, I hope that we have Fields, Bajan, and like a developmental quarterback. I don't want to see some weird three-headed monster type of quarterback room. Yeah, no, it, it makes no sense to do that. Okay. Um, like I said, best case scenario, like look, Kirk Cousins was drafted in the fourth round, so yeah. you know you, you never know. I, his, the, third, the second overall pick. Correct, and and so yeah. you know what? I, I don't mind taking a quarterback. I just want to. I, I'm not willing to sacrifice draft capital on a team that's so depleted for one guy like that. No, we need to build a team. And we've talked about this. Like when you look at these guys that do have success that come in late, um, that I'm, I'm sorry, that are drafted late, they all kind of share one similarity. And that similarity is that the team around them is pretty set. You know, the reason why Tom Brady became Tom Brady is because that, that was a playoff team. He got, put in a position, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on a playoff roster, um, you know, Brock Purdy, same thing. Like the 49ers are a good team. Right. And so if Brock Purdy would not have that same success here, you just wouldn't. I and mean, if you put all that pressure on one man's shoulders, like there's only been one guy in my opinion, in the recent history of the NFL, that's truly been able to put a all the whole offense 
all on his shoulders, and that's been Peyton Manning. He, it didn't even matter what offensive coordinator they had. And I truly believe that he broke the expectations for what a quarterback should be because of how damn beautiful and good he was out there. But, um, but at the same time, look at Tom Brady. Wound up having more success. Pick 199, not pick number one. You know, so if you put guys into a good situation, they could sit there and flourish and develop. 